Hello Legends. In this video, I'm going to go over two new updates to NAN, which are absolutely ridiculous. The first update is that if you go across to build an AI agent, you now have pre-built agents directly within the canvas. We can literally just go through these five pre-built agents, choose one, it brings the entire workflow onto the canvas, tells you how to set up and how to start using it. So we'll be checking out this primarily in this video today. By the way, this is experimental, so I don't know if it's going to be sticking around. You better check it out as soon as you can and yeah, start using this. The second update that we're going to go over is this new production checklist. So a really big like conversation topic that I've been coming across is how do you make your workflows production ready? It's a little bit difficult to know exactly what that looks like if you're not very experienced with like production workflows or building workflows in general. So NAN has just introduced this, also a production checklist that will read your actual workflow and then make recommendations based on what it thinks it's best for uh, basically setting it up for production. So I actually learned about these updates by doing what I normally do, just going into the release notes of NAN and just going through like what's been released, what features have been released, what bugs have been fixed. So I am on the latest version 1.107.3 and I'm using these health hosted version of NAN. Now uh, to read the main updates, go into the release notes and then we see a page like this. So uh, anything from 107.3 is good for us to use. So 1074 is uh, gonna be I think for the next update. 108 is for the next update. So anything up to this is gonna be applicable to us. So you can actually read what's coming out next week. But really we wanna go down to the main, here we are, 107.0. So they always start with like the 0, .0 as the primary version. And then when they release it as a pre-release, like last week, this was available before it was available to everyone in the public. It was available, people use it. If they come into any issues, that's why you have like 107.1, 107.2, cause like they're just fixing the extra issues that came out when it was being tested last week. Anyway, that's how it works. So if you come down to this feature section, uh, you will see the two main things that we're gonna be discussing, which is one, add pre-built agents experiment into NAN, add the production checklist for active workflows. And then to see the final thing that I wanna speak about, you actually have to go into read more and then scroll all the way down. And then you have this thing that says performance improvements. And this is uh, the NAN team is this core is not actually applicable to us on the front end, front end as users of NAN, uh, but it's more for the back end. So the actual NAN team has access to this. They enable sentry tracing. So let's dig into what this is. I'm just gonna click this first link. We are going on a bit of a tangent here, but this is really interesting and important for us to know. So NAN has enabled sentry tracing for 1% of production transactions that they have. Sentry is a tool that helps, uh, is gonna help the NAN team log all the actual um, uh, workflow executions so that they can figure out where are some bottlenecks, where are some issues, basically figure out where is NAN slow and then how can we speed things up. For example, maybe workflow is going to start faster or if you have multiple ex executions at one time, maybe it's going to be better at handling those uh, executions. So this is a back-end thing for the NAN team. It's super interesting to know that they are working on improving the core infrastructure of their system and they are using Sentry to trace their, their environment. And if you just click this Sentry tracing link, you go across to the Sentry tracing page uh, which just explains all the information about you know the anatomy of a trace, what kind of information you can get. So again, it's not really relevant to us. Like this specific core update is more for the NAN team, but it's really nice to know that things will be faster and better and smoother in the future. So the two things that we really care about are these uh, pre-built agents experiment. But for our video, we really care about the pre-built agents experiment. So you can just click into here and then you see their entire update stream of like what, um, what they're planning to do, what issues they came across and how they fixed them. It's super cool. Uh, you can even watch this video um, of a prototype before this is actually released. So this is, yeah, this is awesome. And then you also have the production checklist, which you can click into here. And then you see the actual uh, summary of this feature in the back end. So really what the production checklist does is uh, it has smart detection where it automatically detects if a workflow could benefit from something like AI evaluations, uh, error workflow configuration, and it helps you or, or lets you uh, track saved time. So yeah, really cool stuff here. And now on the NAN canvas, let's speak about those two features. So um, at the start of this video, we saw there's a little like a pop up here, a checklist here. Uh, we don't see this on brand new workflows until we put suitable nodes on the canvas and then we activate the workflow. So um, that's why it's not showing here. For example, if we had like a webhook node, this is a suitable node because you have to interact with it from outside of the canvas. So we can actually enable this now. We get our workflow activated message like normal and then get this production checklist. So uh, I think it's pretty basic for now. It's just meant to be like a kind of a high level, probably a test to see how people are responding to this. They're gonna be logging the usage of this in the back end, And then based on feedback, they probably will like extend this out. But um, production checklist is really cool because I think there's a lot of new users or new people that like people that are new to automation, people that are new to AI automation um, that are using a tool like NAN. 
And uh, NAN is really cool because it just makes anyone like a coder. Like it's, this is at the front uh, for the front end. This is a drag and drop coding interface. You see really nice nodes and everything else, but in the back end, it's 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 all code. Um, so you're basically giving superpowers to regular people that have never had any programming experience before. So the production checklist, I am excited to see how this grows out. That is definitely very cool. Uh, setup error notifications, you can go into more info. And this is just a regular setup for error handling and workflows where you go to your settings here, you go to your yeah, workflow settings and then error workflow, you just kind of choose the, like whenever this workflow will error out, it just sends a message across to your predefined error workflow. Uh, so I've got like some random ones over here, error dash one, for example. So we have some error handling information, which is, this is pretty cool. I mean, error is probably like, error handling is the basis of making a production workflow. You want to figure out where it's stuffing up in order to be able to fix that. And then we also had time saved. So let's go to more info and see what this is. So disable or configure insights metrics collection from your environments variable. Okay, if you're using, okay, NAN here. So yeah, maybe we just need to figure out what this is. Is this time saving thing? I'm not sure if this agent's gonna be, it's gonna know we're speaking about this specific document using tool like NAN to automate repetitive tasks. Okay, so I don't think it's actually tagged into this page, but this is something that you'll have to read more about. I actually, I haven't seen this yet. I haven't used this yet. The inside summary banner displays activity for the last seven days. The dashboard is only available on Pro with limited date ranges. Okay, so that's also pretty interesting. But the main part of this video that we're, we're here to speak about is actually uh, the AI agent. So I'm just gonna start off by getting a chat. Actually, I don't need to get a chat note onto here, I think. I can just um, go into the agent. I mean, I was looking at this before and I wanna make sure that there's a simple way to get into here without like bypassing the agent. If you go to trigger manually, yeah, okay, so you do need some kind of node on a, on a canvas to start with. And then what you actually see is the, the toolkit over here just shows you the uh, non-trigger nodes. Because if you don't have a trigger node here, you're not gonna find that AI template section. So maybe NAN will change this in the future because the templates already come with a trigger. So if we go to, let's just say trigger manually for now, and now we have this AI access. Okay, so pre-built agents. So right now we have five agents on a canvas. This is pretty interesting voice agent let's check this out okay so it opens up an entirely new workflow and we've got some information here voice assistant agent personal ai assistant in telegram handling both text and voice messages can access your google calendar really cool uh read a telegram docs this is the setup information uh that's nice that's neat there's actually one really cool thing that i like about this is when you go into this setup template button this is where you just add your credentials you don't have to go through all the different nodes on a canvas you just click this setup template button and you're adding your information into here. I don't have any Telegram configured here, so I'd have to set it up from scratch. Um, but then you just choose the OpenAI account, for example, the Google Calendar tool, probably that one, and let's go to continue. And that configures all the main stuff. So the model for the AI agents configured, the Google Calendar is configured as well. So the cool thing is that all the pre-built, like all the variables are already passed into this uh, workflow, which is nice. So we have a get file, Okay, so here we're just transcribing the audio, plugging the, plugging the text version of the audio into the agent, or we're setting the, okay, the text, basically the input message. Then the agent has some instructions. Okay, JSON text or JSON message text. So that's basically set up to either accept if it's an uh, audio version when it converts it to text or if it's a text version, so it's uh, able to use either or. That's nice and neat. And then we have instructions. So now this is like NAN, I mean, I don't know if they actually went through this prompt template uh, for best practice, but this is what they've uh, given to us. So that's interesting. Telegram personal assistant, you're a helpful personal assistant that communicates with users through Telegram. Yeah, nice, that's awesome. So I'll just leave the rest of this for you guys to come through here and just check it out. But that's the first workflow. If we go back to the original workspace, we now have email triage agent. Okay, pretty cool, very simple. Email triage agent automatically categorize new unread emails by analyzing the content and applying relevant AI labels. Wicked. Setup template, select, okay, nice, nice, continue. And that's it. Apparently that's actually set up completely. That's really cool. So what do we have here? Sorting by unread emails only. Uh, what are we passing into this agent? We're passing in the from email address, the subject of the email and the contents of the email as well. Please analyze this email and apply appropriate labels. Okay, so they gave some instructions in the user input. That's nice, prompt user message. And then we have, you're an email categorization assistant. Your task is to analyze emails. I've uh, got access to two different tools, get labels, add labels, interesting. 
and then some instructions here. So that's nice and neat. I really like this because this is just, just means if you're brand new to NAN, you literally get already configured workflows onto your canvas um, that you can start rolling with. It doesn't, I mean, I'll have to look at the other workflows. I'm not sure that there is like error handling built into this. So error handling would still need to be something we actually look at. But if you activate your workflow, got it, you now have some, okay, there we go. So set up the error notification stuff, which we spoke about AI steps, a reliability of AI steps using the evaluations. I'm pretty sure this is the evaluations node and then track time saved. So more info, what are the evaluations? I think this is gonna be the evaluations node. Yeah, interesting or light evaluations. I'll have to look into this a little bit later. Okay, so there you go, that actually, that actually answers the question. You get the workflow onto your canvas, you know, the top five probably most used workflows, and then you can actually get the production tips as well. So over time, this will be expanded out, and I reckon you'll have like a really good, like a bank of uh, existing agents or workflows that you can introduce. Knowledge store agent, let's see what's in here. Interesting, so what does this do? A chat-based AI agent to retrieve, analyze, and answer questions using documents uploaded to Google Drive and stored in a vector database. So this is, is this meant to be like a RAG agent then? Configure credentials, create a folder in Google Drive to store your documents, then select, then select it in the file upload trigger node, upload a file to that folder, return to NAN and click execute workflow. Once insert documents has been completed, you can open chat and ask the agent. Okay, interesting. So let's just configure this. Google Drive, there we go, open AI. I think one of the, I've got so many credentials there, it's ridiculous. Save this. Let's actually let's actually run with this workflow. Uh, configure credentials in Google Drive. Create a folder in Google Drive to store your documents. Then select it in the file upload trigger node. Okay, so let's go into here and knowledge store. That's their that's their folder, I think. Yeah, okay, that's their folder. So we need to change it for ourselves. All right, so I've just gone to my Google Drive. I created a new, new folder called NAN test, and then I've selected that folder here as well. So that's uh, that's good to go. And I think. I'm just going to leave everything else. I don't want to touch anything else. The insert and retrieve operation uses the same embedding node. Okay, I'm just going to save this. Let's now activate it. Workflow activated. Yep, cool. I don't care about that for now. And I just asked ChatGPT to generate me five random facts. Let me download it as a PDF. Unfortunately, that first PDF was broken, and then it generated a working PDF, which I uploaded to our NAN test. And let's see what this PDF says. Bananas are berries, but strawberries are not. Octopuses have three hearts. Honey never spoils. Okay, so let me just uh, test this out. Let's open up the chat. What are the contents of the file? Let's see if this is able to just, if that's how easy it was to build out this entire rag agent. Let's see what it says. And we have the five facts. That's awesome. The contents of the file are five random facts. So very silly test, but it worked super easy. That probably took us like under a minute to set up a rag agent. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's keep going through. Task management agent. This is interesting, actually, task management. That's uh, very cool. Okay, so a chat-based task management agent that helps users create, view, update, and delete tasks in Google Sheets. Oh, that's neat. I like that a lot. I really like that. Wow, holy sugar. Configure credentials. Go into here. Choose your account. And then choose your account. Continue. Wow, that's insane. What's the prompt here? So let's have a look. You're a task management agent, agent, okay, what am I saying? You're a helpful task management assistant that helps users organize their tasks. Uh, you can view, you can help users with view tasks, create tasks, update, delete. That's insane. Oh, I really like that a lot. I actually really like that a lot. But which, which sheet is it using? Uh, enrichment example. I wonder what's going to happen if I just say, hi, what tasks do I have? Oh, wait a minute. It's going to tell me, create a Google Sheet, the task description deadline. Okay. Yep. I should have just followed those examples. That's what we have. Let's create a Google Sheet. Let's pop that down here. Let's say test task. That should be fine. I'm just going to go through and change all this to that task, test task thing. Okay. So that's our first one. Okay. Updated everything saved everything now let's actually just refresh this bring it up what tasks do i have and it's going to read this thing here so we've got a to do for plan a meeting the 8th of the 5th okay to do okay add a new task to wash my car by 
August, well, 21. Okay, August 25. Let's see if it just adds that task as well. Let's come into here. Whoa, wicked. That is awesome. Okay, maybe we just update the prompt to, to actually ask for the description as well in case we want the description. The date, the actual formatting of the date was added a little bit differently to what we have here. So maybe some more uh, control around the date. But overall, this is insane. Like that's really, neat. I like that a lot. Yeah, well done, NA, and that's awesome. And now the final one is this joke agent. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so uh, a joke, a chat-based joke agent that uses the joke API, okay. And then AI model to deliver this and this. Let's come into here, choose the account, wicked. What's the prompt, what are we dealing with? I just turned it into an expression, so we can pop it up here. Your fun and entertaining, your main purpose, how to use the joke API. Okay, does it have the access to the API? Yes, maybe it's a free API then. Tell me a joke. Okay, are we gonna use the joke API? We're using the joke API. It is free, wow. I like that. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have guts. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's nice. Yeah, okay, maybe you just have like multiple turn detection here so you don't say it straight away. But that's really cool. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have guts. Wanna hear another one? Yeah, I do, but later on, thank you very much. Okay, so I have to admit that was incredibly easy. I actually didn't know how easy it would be to set it up uh, for the credentials and then actually interact with the, especially for the RAG agent. That was so easy. And actually also for the task manager, this isn't, I'm, I'm gonna spend some time looking into this stuff. I really like what this is. And if you're watching this far, as a gentle reminder, I've got a school community, uh, feel free to come in and join. All right, I'll see you in the next one.